I've seen in the first part of this lecture how to obtain the resistance or the conductance between two conductors. Now, if the if the region between the two conductors is ideal, uh, so uh, you have only epsilon r and no conductivity, is assume that the sigma is zero, then this really acts as a capacitor. When you connect a voltage, you apply a voltage between the two blades. Positive charge deposit on one of the electrodes, the other negative charge de deposit on the negative electrode, and then uh, these charges, of course, will organize themselves to make each one of these electrodes uh, an equipotential surface. So the potential will be V, here it's going to be zero, the same potential everywhere. Electric field lines will stretch from the uh, positive electrode to the negative electrode. And uh, in order to calculate the capacitance between these two conductors, we have two ways. The first one we call it the Q method, the second one we call it the V method. The V method is very similar to the one we use for the uh, resistances, where we solve uh, the um, Laplace equation, Nabla squared is equal, V is equal to zero. Once you have Nabla squared, V is equal to zero, you get to E, you, you, you get E as equal to minus the gradient of V, you get E is equal to minus the gradient of V, and then once you have E, you can get D, and from D, by applying the boundary condition on the surface, you can get the surface charge density. And from the surface charge density, you can get the total charge, so you can uh, uh, get the total Q on the positive electrode. And then from Q, you can get the ratio of Q over V, the voltage difference between the two blades, and this will give you the capacitance between them. This is called the V method, and this is probably is more general to apply. And it starts by, La, by Laplace or uh, Laplace equation usually. Uh, get the electric field, get the vector D, apply the boundary condition from D to get the uh, surface charge density. From surface charge density, get the total charge, divide the, to the positive charge on the positive electrode by the voltage difference between them, and then you get the capacitance C. So this is here, this term here is the capacitance. As the second approach is called the Q method. And the Q method is a little bit different because what you will do, you will, uh, and it applies usually for cases of high degrees of symmetry. You, you assume a certain charge Q, and then you apply Gauss law to get the the D to get the uh, the displacement vector, and from D you get E, and then you integrate from E E dot D L between the two electrodes to get the voltage difference. And then you obtain the, the ratio between the charge and the voltage difference, and this will give you the capacitance. So there are two ways really to obtain the capacitance in this case. So as I explained earlier, the first method is called the V method, and this is a general procedure. You start by solving Laplace or Poisson equation to get the voltage at any or the potential at any point R. Apply E equal to minus gradient V to get the electric field at any point in the space. I apply D equal to epsilon E to determine the electric flux density vector. And we have two ways of calculating the total charge, either from the boundary conditions, you get the surface charge density, and then you integrate it, or you apply Gauss law around the best of positive conductor to get the total charge on the positive conductor. So this surface here should enclose the positive conductor, and here you are summing the positive flux from the positive conductor, and this will be the charge Q. The last thing that you need to calculate the capacitance is to divide uh, the total charge on the positive conductor by the voltage difference between the two electrodes. This is called the uh, V method. Other method I mentioned is called the Q method, and uh, it starts in a completely different route. We start by assuming a charge Q on the uh, on the on the positive electrode and minus Q on the negative electrode, and then you apply Gauss law to solve for the D for the electric uh, uh, flux density vector, and once you have D, you can get E using the ratio between V and D at E, which is epsilon. Once you have E, you can integrate between the positive and the negative electrodes. So the positive electrode minus the negative electrode be the integral from A to B from the positive electrode, negative electrode of E dot DL. This will give you the voltage difference. And then you obtain the ratio between the charge, the third charge on the positive electrode, the assumed charge on the positive electrode, and the uh, the voltage difference between the two electrodes. And both both techniques I should give the same result if the if one of the, if both of them apply. Let's take a look at one example. Here we have would like to get the capacitance of a single isolated conducting sphere of a radius a. So here we don't have two conductors, just one conductor, but we can assume that the second conductor is at infinity. 
and uh, we try to if we of course if we connect this uh, this conductor here to uh, to a, a voltage source there will be some charges accumulating on it to bring it to that potential so it acts really as a capacitor it's still uh, it it, st it still stores charges and uh, we can apply the same way we have seen before to get the um, the, uh, the, the all the components that we need uh, to determine the, um, the the voltage, the capacitance, the electric field, and so on. So we start here by applying the Q method. So we'll assume because of symmetry, there is a charge Q uniformly distributed on this conducting sphere. And of course, the electric field will be in the radial direction. D will be a function of R, and it's only a function of, uh, in, it'll be in the R direction. So here we can apply Gauss law, the integral of d dot ds is equal to q. Now we do the, 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 uh, the q method. Um, of course, because uh, d is a constant, I can take it out. The integral of ds, which is r squared sine theta, d theta, d phi, will give us, um, in this case, will give us 4 pi r squared. So that the d will be equal to q over 4 pi r squared in the r direction. Once I have d, I can get e, because e is equal to d divided by epsilon, and because uh, here I assume that outside the, this conductor there is air, I divide it by epsilon naught. Now, the voltage difference between the surface of this conductor to infinity is equal to the integral from a to infinity of e dot dl. We assume that the voltage at infinity is equal to zero. So this here will give us zero. This will be the integral from a to infinity. The integral of 1 over r squared will give us minus 1 over r, Substitute upper limit minus lower limit, get Q over 4 by epsilon naught A. Now we know, so now we know that the voltage, di voltage difference or the voltage of, the, of this sphere relative to infinity is Q over 4 by epsilon naught A. Now if we divide Q over V, this will give us a capacitance relative to infinity here in this case. So Q over v, VA will be equal to 4 by epsilon naught A farad. So this is the capacitance of this isolated sphere, and we obtained it using the Q method. In a second example, we'd like to get the capacitance between two concentric spherical conductors. Uh, the outer conductor of radius B is grounded, the inner one has a radius A. Uh, we, have so, we have solved a number of examples similar to this one, and uh, the easiest one, easiest approach for solving this problem is simply to use the V method. So we'll start by Laplace equation. To get V and from V we'll get E and from E we'll get D and from D we'll get the charge and then we we'll divide the charge by the voltage difference to get the capacitance. We we'll start by applying Laplace equation, Laplace squared V is equal to zero and uh, given the boundary condition that uh, the, the potential here is equal to V naught and then the outer layer is grounded is equal to zero. So we solve for that and we obtain V as a function of R. So Laplace equation in cylindrical coordinates is given by this expression 1 over R squared partial partial R of R squared partial V partial R. This R squared will cancel. We integrate relative to R. This will give us a constant. We divide by R squared. And then we integrate relative to R. So this will give us minus C1 over R plus C2. When V is equal, when the radius is equal to A, the voltage is equal to V naught. So we know that uh, V0 is equal to minus C1 over A plus C2. When the radius is equal to B, you get 0. Then we know that 0 is equal to minus C1 over B plus C2. If you, su if you subtract these two equations, you get rid of C2. And you can solve for C1, and then you can later solve for C2 as well. So by simplifying, we are able to obtain that C1 is equal to V0 over 1 over B minus 1 over A. And uh, C2 is equal to C1 over B. So if you multiply both sides here by B, you get V0 to 1 over 1 minus B over A. So V as a function of R is given by this expression. This is here is C1. This is here is C2. Of course, we can obtain the gradient. The you can move to obtain the, according to the V method, obtain the electric field minus the gradient. So you differentiate this one relative to R. You get minus 1 over R squared with a negative sign, so this will cancel. So this is the electric field in the, in the R direction. 1 over A minus 1 over B, R squared. We can, of course, get D. D is equal to epsilon naught E. There is no mention of any dielectric between them, so we can assume it's air. So this is uh, the value of D, which simply equal to this E multiplied by epsilon naught. So we have the value of D as well. 
Now we apply Gauss law in order to get the total charge on the positive um, on the positive uh, on the positive sphere. So uh, this is here. This is d. D is in the r direction. D s is in the r direction. It's r squared sine theta d theta d phi. This out uh, this will cancel this one. You integrate theta from zero to pi. You integrate phi from zero up to two pi. Um, and uh, you can take this term out here, and the integral of sine theta d theta d phi will give you four pi. So the final answer will be four pi epsilon naught v naught over one over a minus one over b. Of course, we want to get the capacitance. Then we divide q over v naught, and this will give us the capacitance four pi epsilon naught one over a minus one over b. So as was mentioned earlier, we divide q over v naught. You have this value here for the capacitance and you can simplify multiplying by eb and you obtain this answer here for the capacitance of this spherical capacitor